three tenths. That's how far Max was behind Fernando Alonso after sector two on his last qualifying lap in Q3 for the pole. Three tenths. That means that the last sector, which is entrance to the swimming pool, the tight exit of the swimming pool, the acceleration run out of the swimming pool section, and then into Rascas, where you're braking with load on the car. car the track's going to the left, you're braking there. You've got then the tight right hand at the first part of Rascas. You've got the acceleration run there, and then you've got the last corner onto the pit straight. That's all that remained for Max Verstappen to try to get the pole. Three tenths and a little bit more, obviously, if you wanted to go quicker than Fernando. And he did it. <laughs> I can't believe that he did that. There's one thing that's got to be said straight out of the box, and that is potentially Red Bull got the temperatures absolutely perfect for Sector 3, where there's all important traction episodes, certainly coming out of the last corner, and to some extent coming out of the first part of Rascas, and certainly coming out of the swimming pool as well. They're all traction places. They're all Sergio Perez places. Yeah, right. We'll talk about him in a bit. Uh, uh, potentially Red Bull got it absolutely right there and sacrificed the first two but I don't think it was as mechanical or as scientific as that I think Max was a bit conservative he by his own words he was conservative through sector one coming out of Sander Vogt we'd already seen Sergio hit the wall there and I suppose that would have echoed through the Red Bull garage and there would have been just a warning sign for going into Sander Vogt so that's potentially why it would have left a little bit of margin there Sector two, Fernando was just unbelievably quick there. He was incredibly good there. And the Aston Martin, he looked so poised there. The balance of the car, the drivability of the car was just perfect for Fernando. Uh, and then, and that was high speed braking as well into the chicane and then into Tabac. So Fernando, really, really good there. And on that sector, Max was a tenth off. You may not think that's very much, but in, the, in going for the pole, it is a massive amount given how competitive it was. So sector three begins at the exit of Tabac. Not really a traction thing, a little bit of traction, but it's more momentum. It's more getting Tabac absolutely correct. Then it's the very fast entry through into the swimming pool. Now, I think a lot of people are going to say, wow, what a sector three from Max Verstappen. And it includes, obviously, the entry of the swimming pool. Incredibly spectacular high speed. Yes, I think it's about 155 miles an hour looking at the MPH on the on the onboard, around that number. But I don't think he would have been and was massively quicker than Fernando or Charles through there. And even if he was, let's say he was one or two miles an hour quicker through there it wouldn't have given him any reward because as you come out of that, you're almost on the brake straight away. There's no reward, there's no long straight for the tight right left with the curbs. And there's no way in the world you can take any risk there at all. You, all you can do is shave the apex as tight as you can possibly shave it, but don't hit the curb on the, on the, on the left as Carlos Sainz did yesterday, as many drivers have done and bounce into the guardrail. So what was it? What was it on sector three that actually gave effectively three tenths, maybe four tenths to Max Verstappen, gave him the pole at Monaco. It was turn in under load. It's what he does unbelievably well. And I was watching, I mentioned in the live stream I did uh, earlier this week that I was going to watch from above Rascas as they're coming in. <clears throat> to me, it's a really good place to watch. No, no real photographers there because it's quite difficult, I think, to get the sort of angle they want and to get the, the overall picture they need. But in terms of actually seeing what drivers are doing, going into that right-hander under load, breaking under load, and how they're handling that, I think it's really, really good. Particularly as a pedestrian crossing on the road there, and you can actually relate one car's position on the circuit to another. So I took some pictures this morning, and these, I absolutely, I mean, the disclaimer here is that they're terrible pictures in terms of beautiful shots. Hopefully we'll have some from the teams where you can put into this video and you can look at the beautiful shots. But what this is, is a comparison between Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez this morning going into that Rascasse section where you're breaking under load and it's effectively a double apex. You've got the first part and then the second part. A lot of drivers make it one corner and you come out and you get a bit of oversteer and you accelerate up the hill and then you go into the last part of rest gas. So have a look at this. That's Max Verstappen. As I say, it's a terrible picture. And those railings, nothing to do about that. That's a little pathway just in front of where I was watching. That's Max's positioning of his car and that's Sergio Perez's positioning of his car. Sergio doing what he does. Fairly late apex, waiting till he can sort of get the car settled, knows that he can get on the power and aiming for the second apex. Whereas Max 
is breaking down to a rotation point with a very, very short entry to the corner. And that is where he got the pole. Well, he wasn't racing against Sergio Perez, of course, but I'm doing that because they're both in the same car. And a lot of people might say, oh, well, you know, the Red Bull's got better turning or whatever. So let's have a look now at Max versus Fernando Alonso, which was the driver that he had to beat in order to get the pole. All credit to Fernando. I mean, he just looked superb all day. So this is Max. I'm using the same Max shot. Look where, this is a quick lap from Fernando. Look where Fernando is positioning the Aston Martin. He's doing the same thing. He's doing exactly the same thing as Perez. He's getting a much wider approach and he's aiming for that second apex to get it absolutely right. And his judgment and his car control is brilliant. But look how Max is shortening the corner compared with Fernando Alonso. And that is, again, to repeat the point, that is where he got the pole. Because from that rotation point, he's got the car absolutely linear straight where he needs it for the exit. And he's got a shorter corner and perfect straight line exit from the corner. And I dare say it would have been the same going into the last bit, although it's so sort of tight and it's a funny camber change. I don't think it's quite as dramatic. But that is the highlight of how good Max Verstappen is with load on the car, braking with load on the car, how he can manipulate the car and still get a shorter corner than Sergio Perez and Fernando Alonso. Just a word on Sergio Perez. I was, I've been saying in the build-up to Monaco, this is one of his circuits. This is a circuit where last year, obviously, he was really, really good. And he's got this feel for the back end. He's got an incredible feel for traction. His strong point is not the entry to the corner. It's not shortening the corner the way it is for Max Verstappen. And what Sergio needed to do today, in my opinion, was A, let the track come to him, because it was going to get quicker throughout qualifying for a start. Not try too hard in Q1, just get the car up into Q2, and then get it into Q3. Uh, yeah, fairly basic stuff. But beyond that, only really be Sergio Perez... On the traction side of the corner, you're never ever going to out Max, Max Verstappen, breaking for Sander Vogt and going into Sander Vogt quickly if you're Sergio Perez. No way in the world. And that's what he did. I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, he, he needed to be slower into the entry point. He needed to break earlier than Max into Sander Vogt. He needed to be doing all he does so well with traction mid corner and getting it up the hill. But he didn't. He got lured into this whole thing of, I've got to go really quickly on a you know, quick corner, that Sander Vogt. I don't know what he was thinking. I think, that, what, I think that shunt we saw today for Perez was a culmination of all the stuff that's been going on probably in Mexico around you can take the championship to Max, Sergio, you can do it, you're as quick as Max, you've got to get the same treatment. And when, of course, he had the, uh, you know, when he couldn't match him in the semi-wet conditions in, in Melbourne and kept locking up, he blamed the team, there was something wrong with the car, even though the team said there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. And after Miami when you know what can i say about miami you know max just out drove him he was unbelievably good on the hard tire used hard tire compared with perez on the new new hard tires albeit fuel loads were different at that point uh, uh, sorry when max had started with new hards he had much heavier fuel loads so it wasn't a direct comparison but he beat him uh, and again sergio said you know very strange performance got to do something like this can't keep happening and i think it was a combination of all that you know, I think Sergio went into Monaco, it appears, believing that he was going to be as quick as Max into corners. Massive mistake. He was going to be quick, as quick, and maybe quicker out of some corners. That's where he would have been quick. As it is, he's starting from the back of the grid. So that's what pressure does, I guess. That's what fame and adulation, if you start reading it and believing it, it does to you. So yeah, I, uh, Max, absolutely brilliant. And how he... I mean, I don't think he thought going into the swimming pool, ah, it's all going to be coming out of rest gas, my, my corner entries are shorter, I'm going to do it there. He was just Max Verstappen, and from his point of view, he was on the absolute limit. He was in a zone, and he was just driving with short corners. As I say, he was perfect through the swimming pool. He was perfect through the last part of the swimming pool as well. But I don't think that's what gave him the pole, because I don't think there was enough advantage to be gained by being perfect there, compared with Fernando through there, or compared with Charles Leclerc through there. And there's not enough straight anyway, even if he was. It was all the rest of the stuff. And, and that, was, that was just stunning. Stunning to watch. I mean, everybody. I, I, I called it that you know, there's no way he could be on the pole by the time he got to Tabak. And yet, he did. <laughs> just amazing. So, what a qualifying session. Everyone's been saying this year, you know, Red Bull winning everything. Are they going to win everything? Well, they may well win tomorrow. They may not. But Monaco was unbelievably competitive I mean four drivers basically doing the same lap time and it took Max just to go over the edge to get the pole and 
Why is that? You know, I think part of it is, is the nature of the circuit because let's say in the case of Alpine, who went really well. I mean, congratulations to Alpine. Really, really good job, particularly Lester Man. Oh, what a lap. But you've got to assume their powertrain is what, 0.2, maybe 0.3 down on most circuits compared with Ferrari, Red Bull, Mercedes. And yet around here, it wouldn't be. The, the, the difference wouldn't be anything like as big. So that was one thing that the circuit nullifies um, something like a powertrain disadvantage. And then there's getting in a good lap with no traffic, getting the tires absolutely perfect and some funky corners, if that's the right word, where you can do things. I mean, Esteban knock on, you know, I'm going to do on a live stream coming up. I'm going to, I've got a lot more photos like this and you can see Esteban knock on incredible into Rascas as well this morning. Very, very similar to Max. I'd never seen him drive that well before. Really, really impressive. And Carlos Sainz was good too. He, he looked really good until Charles Leclerc came along and was like, I don't know, a third of a car's width inside him. Again, really stunning through Rascas in that Ferrari. Whereas Fernando is, you know, Fernando's got a really drivable car and loves the late apex thing and just has the car beautifully stable and balanced. And if Max has any sort of glitch tomorrow, Fernando's going to win the Monaco Grand Prix. If there's anything going on with Max, it needs to be a perfect race from, from Red Bull, I think. So let's have a look at some of the other results. Um, you know, Max 11-3, Fernando and Charles 11-4 both. 0 0.03 difference between the two. I think the Aston Martin's a slightly better car, slightly more drivable car. The Ferrari's more edgy. And that showed up, I think, really under pressure for Carlos Sainz, who did a, an 11.6. So good, very good job by Charles Leclerc. He didn't hit anything, hasn't hit anything all weekend, and has built up slowly. Looked a bit scruffy and scrappy yesterday, but really, look, really looked good today. Uh, and Esteban Ocon, for me, one of the stars, you know, P4 in the Alpine, Pierre Gasly P7, really, really good for Alpine. They've been getting a bit of stick from Laura Rossi recently, unjustifiably, in my view. I think they've made a lot of progress. And um, to have both Alpines again in the top 10 around Monaco, very impressive. And then there was Mercedes. So, you know, yesterday you could say, as I said at the end of the video yesterday, were Mercedes much quicker or are they actually the same as McLaren now? You know, difficult to say where they're at with these improvements. But Lewis didn't help his cause at all at the end of FP3. When he came into Mirabeau, very un -Lewis like went into Mirabeau and just the back end came out. I think he touched the curb maybe on the on the apex and, and just went to the outside into the guardrail, left front suspension gone. Very un -Lewis like And what a time to do it, you know, when they're just trying to build everything up, the momentum in the in the new car. Well I say the new car, the new upgrades. And so that was a rebuild job for Mercedes going into qualifying. And at one point, Lewis, I mean, Lewis was on the bubble, Q1, Q2, got into Q3, all credit to him to put those laps together. At one point, he was saying the car feels snatchy on the right coming out of the swimming pool, possibly as a result of, you know, the setup that had to be, the, the setup change, or the setup development work that had to be done on the car after the damage. So, you know, you, you damage a car at Monaco, and there is always the risk of that. But he got in a lap at the end, he was quicker than, than George, who ended up qualifying what p8 so mercedes with all these revamps p6 p8 is about probably where they would have been if they hadn't done touched the car at all with, <laughs> with those two drivers pierre gasly between them and the other alpine yuki Sonoda again doing a really good job for alpha tari and lando norris I, i'm in mclaren mechanics hats off to the mclaren mechanics to get lando norris's mclaren back into qualifying for, ready for q3 he hit the wall pretty hard coming out of tobacco and um, but they got it out so really good did one lap or two laps or something but he starts p10 ahead of oscar piastri who did a really good job didn't touch anything very very good job he was right on lando's pace and so that was it i think variables will come to play tomorrow the weather's a bit iffy i mean it was a beautiful day today but the weather potentially supposed to be iffy tomorrow and then there's all the other stuff you know there's safety cars there's red flags there's all the stuff that usually comes with monaco uh, Max has got the clean side of the road. He's got the pole. In theory, he should have a little bit of a gap going into Sandovot from Fernando. Uh, and then right behind him on the clean side of the grid, you've got Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari. So in, in from Charles' point of view, pressure's kind of off now. Fernando's point of view, the pressure's off. I mean, he can only have a great race, can't he? I mean, there's no pressure on Fernando to do anything. And that's a really nice way to go into Monaco. And Max, well, Max doesn't really feel the pressure, does he? He's on the pole. He's just going to make his start and go in there and try and win the Grand Prix from the front and control it the way he normally does. Uh, but 
lots of variables will come into play. So there we are, great poll for Max Verstappen. That was one of his best polls, I think. And I think it was, you know, it was kind of lost in all the subtleties of what Sector 3 at Monaco is all about. And uh, you know, again, apologies for the quality of those photographs, but I hope they show dramatically. When I talk about short corners and how Max is the personification of short corners, I, I hope that kind of shows what I'm talking about. As I say, I've got lots of other pictures, Charles Leclerc, Lewis, George, um, you name it, the two Alpine drivers in comparison, which I'll put in a live stream sometime next week. So roll on tomorrow, the Monaco Grand Prix. Thanks to our two partners on this channel, to Jetcraft and to Pitbox IO. You can see what they're all about in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.